All right. First of all, I'd like to say thank all of you for all of your support here on Facebook and my Facebook family, man. Y'all are so, y'all are remarkable, man. And I just want to give you my gratitude. And I enjoy doing this because I know it's been appreciated and people are respecting it. And it's giving them some knowledge that they really didn't really think about. But I am blessed that God have gave me this knowledge. And I'm also blessed that I can document this knowledge and put it for the future generation. You know, and I look back and what we're going to do is go into a segment of untold history here in the state of Texas. But today, we're going to start off with our Houston Astros baseball. Because, see, that's what we were known for was baseball. I hate it. I know we got a lot of people out there that love football. I do, too. But we were known for baseball, and I'll show you why, and I'll tell you why. Because when baseball, major leagues, and professional sports, period, did not want to come to the South for anything when it concerns sports, especially in uh, 1947, after 1947, when Jackie Robinson broke the color baron, uh, but the thing about it here in the state of Texas, it still was a law. And the law stated that blacks could not integrate with whites. That was the law. You know, a lot of people say they were racist, but that's the law. And the people who owned these establishments, they was only going by the law. Let me just give you a quick example but before we get off into it so a lot of people can understand. It's just like marijuana. Marijuana is against the law here. But now you go up there in Colorado, in California, you can smoke all the marijuana you want. They even got a, a restaurant where you can order marijuana while you eat. So it was a law that whites and blacks could not get close and integrate with each other. So let's go back to professional sports. And this is the reason why professional sports such as baseball, which was the number one sport, just started everything before football or basketball. And when baseball came in, they did not give Houston nor any team in the state of Texas a major league baseball team. We had a minor league team that was called the Houston Buffs. And the Houston Buffs was a minor league team, uh, which a minor league team that some people might not know is a farm team. That's the team that you go that you have to work your way up to the major leagues. And we was a farm team for the St. Louis Cardinals and the Chicago Cubs. And it was called the Houston Buffs. And it was there on the uh, what Buff Stadium, which was right there on the corner of I forty five in color today. And later on fingers bought that that uh property. But before the end in 1933, up until 1961, we was a minor league baseball team. We did not get to be a major league base football team uh, until 1965, because the Houston Oilers were not considered as an NFL team. It was an AFL team. But we'll get into that in another series. But right now, we're talking about baseball. And in 1962, George Roy Harfine, he was a judge because he was elected a judge in 1933. And he stayed a judge for four years until 1936. And then Roy Harfine was a mayor. He was a mayor for two years. So Mayor Harfine, we're talking about Roy Harfine, not Fred, because his son got, became a, a mayor. But um, we're talking about Judge Roy Halfine, who bought the Houston Astros, who had a vision of playing baseball inside. Now, nobody never heard of that. He was way well ahead of his time. And it was, later on became the Astrodome. 
but he bought the team in 1962. He bought the franchise for us to have a major sports team here. And that was the Coke 45. And the place where they played baseball was right out there in the parking lot where the Astrodome is now. It was a temporary stadium built in 1962 for the Coke 45. And when they came in in 1962, the law was still segregated. So the blacks had to sit out in the outfield. Right. They could not sit in box seats in 1962. But then in 1965, when they completed the Astrodome, and it was the eighth wonder of the world. And that's when the Jim Crow law was throughout. The Jim Crow law was segregation. Because in 64, Johnson passed the Civil Rights Bill. And it went in effect in 1965. And in 1965, the Astrodome made its debut. The eighth wonder of the world. The President of the United States Lyndon Bain Johnson was down here to open up the Astrodome. What a big event here in Houston. Major League Baseball played under a roof. Never heard of it, but it happened. And then they start having problems with, well, what are we going to do about the grass? How the grass going to grow? We can't water the grass. The grass can't get sunlight. So what they decided to do, the AstroTurf, that you look at every day on football and baseball was started right here in Houston, Texas with the AstroTurf, which was a turf that looked like grass because they could not grow grass with, without any sun coming in, and they didn't have a disposable uh, 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 open roof like they got at Minnie Mae Park during them days. So, therefore, they had to lay down a turf for the baseball field. But the bottom line is that the Houston Colt 45, in the 65, they had to change the name from the Colt 45 because that was the name of a beer company, and the beer company had patterned that name. So they could no longer use Colt 45, so they had to name the team another name. And this is going to be real funny, but it's real. And it actually really happened. Because when the baseball team came in, the Coke 45 and 62, uh, the radio station that was carrying the games was KPRC, which is owned by the Hobby family, which is the Hobby Airport is named after William P. Hobby. And also he had the television station. But TV on baseball was, was not a local thing. It was a national thing on every Saturday. NBC would carry Major League Baseball, baseball game of the week. But you could not see baseball through the weekdays, only on Saturdays. And therefore, it's a lot of history into this. So therefore, when they moved the team into the Astrodome, and the Jim Crow law was no longer there, so blacks didn't have to sit in the end zone or sit in the outfield when they played baseball in the Astrodome. They could sit anywhere they want to sit. They could sit where their money was have them to sit. No more segregation. So therefore, when they came in and they had to name, rename the team, uh, and the person who won, who won the prize, now this is going to be, it's, it's funny, but it's true. The person that won the prize, and they was trying to think of a name that could suit the baseball team. And now since Houston be, is becoming to be a space city, because they had just not too long uh, finished NASA out there in Clear Lake. So we were known to be able to have a sport, uh, a, a space city. We were known to have a space city here in Houston. And when... They thought about the name. They wanted to, to revolve around space. And the person who won the prize was the lady of the family who came up with Astro. And they asked them, where did they get the name from? And during them days, the only thing we would watch was cartoons on Saturdays. 
and they had this cartoon called the Jetson, with George Jetson, his son Elroy, his, his uh, wife Jane, and and uh, and the dog that's named Astro. So this is the only thing that we knew that had sports that had space in it. So they came up the, with the name of Astro, and since it was a team, they decided they came up with the name Astros. So that's where the name come from, y'all. They'll never tell you that. That's why this untold sports. And I'm so blessed that I can bring this to you and document this. And you won't be able to Google this. No. It's something that you have to have your common sense to realize, hey, where did the name come from? Does it make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Because it's real. Anyway, when they came up and they moved into Astrodome, and the Jim Crow law was no longer existing, so blacks can sit anywhere they want to sit, including Hispanics. And that's when Major League came into effect. And then when they finally got the first black player, he was a player from, uh, I guess you might case say, uh, from the Dominican Republic, and his name was Roman Mejias. And when he came in, he was a a, color, a, a a person of color. He wasn't, he wasn't an American black, but he was black. And then the next following year, 1963, they came up with the guy who I interviewed, J.C. Wilson, as the first black American black to play for the Houston Astros. And I did an interview on J.C. Wilson. And later on, in 1965, when they moved into the Astrodome, we had our first black superstar. His name was Mr. Jim Wynn. And I want all of y'all that's looking at this video, pray for Jim Wynn because his health is deteriorating and his family needs your prayers. Because J.C. told me this. And I know Jim Wynn was our first black superstar in this city. The Houston Oilers did not have no black superstar. The Houston Oilers was not a major league sports team. Because George Roy Hartfine, he was a businessman. He wasn't about being racist. He was a businessman. And like I say, a lot of these places had to abide by the law. And the law stated that blacks and white could not be integrated. So I only said that because... People had to educate me. People like Mr. Joe Weingarten family. They were Jewish people. They didn't have nothing against blacks. But blacks couldn't eat at the lunch counter because, why? Because there was the law. And if you break the law, what you going to do? You're going to go to jail and pay a fine. So I just want to put that by you for all of my friends that want to hear untold sports history. I'm giving it to you. And the reason why I'm giving it to you because God blessed me to go through it and give me the knowledge to know a little bit about it and give me the knowledge to be able to put this together and document this so the future generation can see this. Because when I first started this, it was just like Raw Hot Fire. Man, that's unbelievable. You ain't going to be able to play no baseball inside. What about the pop flies and what about the grass? Hey, if you have a vision, you ought to put the put it in effect. Only thing you have to do is just have faith. And I'd like to thank all of y'all. And we're going to do some more segments on this, including the Dallas Cowboys. How the start got there because it was the <clears throat> it was the first professional football team in Texas. And why the start? Because Texas is the Lone Star State. Why it's an American team? Because Texas is the Lone Star State. It can stand alone by itself. That's what Lone Star means. That means we can have our own oil here. We got our own fruit and vegetables in the garden. We got our own cattle here. So Texas don't need the other states in the Union. The Union need Texas. That's why... Dallas Cowboys is America's team. I will get into that in the next segment. But right now, I want to get off into our Houston Astros and wish them luck.